the day we're taking a look at these NFL matches, which are happening on Sunday, November 6, 2022, and giving you match breakdowns, betting tips and predictions in general on these games. Welcome back to High Stakes, let's get straight into it, also, don't forget to subscribe and push that notification bell to get notified as soon as we release these sport prediction videos, and if you would like more betting tips and predictions, then check out our Patreon in the link down below. Our new Patreon is a way for us to help you improve your chances of making more money. Multiple plans are available for each and every one of you, by becoming a member of the High Stakes Patreon, you will have access to our best team picks, total picks, parlay picks and much more. Stop wasting hours of your time searching for bad betting predictions that ends up costing you a lot of time and money. Join the High Stakes Patreon now and get the best betting picks. Jacksonville Jaguars vs Las Vegas Raiders. The Las Vegas Raiders really are in a must-win situation, as another defeat would really put them behind the eight ball in a very competitive AFC. The Raiders have been hampered by injuries, but the good news is Adams is listed as probable for Sunday. All in all, they are just too talented to have this record. I like the matchup here for the Raiders as they are good against the run, and they should be able to slow down Eddie End and make Lawrence beat them, and Lawrence typically hasn't been up to the task this year. After last week's debacle against the Saints, I think a refocused Raiders team takes care of business. Take the Raiders giving up the points. I think this game will come down to which team performs better defensively, so I don't expect the offenses to have the ability to run the score up. The Jaguars have a defense that pressures the ball well, but they also have defenders that are very good at earning tackles for loss, which will make it difficult for the Raiders to get first downs and into the red zone. Adams and Carr have had some injury issues recently which caused some inconsistent practices, so they may run the ball a bit more to prevent further injury and allow each of them to feel more comfortable. With both defenses able to pressure and force turnovers, I think drives will be longer for each team and contain a bit more running than usual. Take the under, 48 points. Cincinnati Bengals vs Carolina Panthers. The Carolina Panthers have been dealing with adversity all season. They have been ravaged by injuries and even dismissed head coach Matt Rule. They have only covered the spread three times all season. The Bengals return home where they have covered in consecutive games, and I like their chances to win this one in a blowout. Furthermore, the Panthers are starting PJ Walker at QB. Walker only connected on 52% of his pass attempts against Atlanta last week, and he will struggle against a solid Bengals secondary that is limiting foes to only 210 passing yards per game. Joe Burrow is in the groove, surpassing 300 passing yards in two out of his last three performances, and the Panthers rank 20th in the NFL in pass defense. While Chase isn't playing, Higgins and Boyd are more than capable. Take the Cincinnati Bengals minus 7 points. The Carolina Panthers are seeking their first road win of the season. Carolina beat the Bucks by a convincing 21-3 score on October 23rd. The Panthers have been involved in several close games on the road, losing to the Giants by three points early in the season in September, and were 4.5-point dogs in a 37-34 overtime road loss in Atlanta last week. Carolina has only covered the spread in one of their three road games. The Panthers have been decimated by injuries to their QBs. Sam Darnold is on the IR and is not expected to be ready. Baker Mayfield has missed the last three games with an ankle injury and served as the backup last week. PJ Walker was stellar in the win against Tampa Bay and got the start against the Falcons. He was sharp, recording 317 passing yards. The 27-year-old QB has 614 passing yards, along with a 3-1 TD to int ratio. Walker has been named the starter for this game. The Cincinnati Bengals' inconsistent play continues. They have yet to resemble the squad that dominated last season, but the good news is they are only one game behind first place Baltimore. Since he had their two-game winning streak erased in an ugly 32-13 road loss in Cleveland on Monday, in a bout that had the Bengals favored by three points. They have covered the spread in five out of their last six games. Joe Burrow is playing well. The 25-year-old QB has eclipsed 300 passing yards in two out of his last three games and has only thrown one interception in his last three bouts. Burrow has collected 23-29 passing yards, accompanied by a 17-6 TD to int ratio. This low total doesn't give enough credit to the weapons in Cincinnati's arsenal, with Mixon, Higgins, and Tyler Boyd. The over is also 5-1 in the Panthers' last six games, after scoring more than 30 points in their previous game. 
I'm not expecting an offensive explosion from either team, but they don't have to light up the scoreboard to go over 42.5 total points. As long as the Panthers keep up their competitive spirit, as they have so far under Coach Wilkes, I see this game going back and forth long enough to justify picking the over. Bet the total going over 42.5 points. Atlanta Falcons vs Los Angeles Chargers. Los Angeles put an end to its three-game winning streak in Week 7, losing to the Seattle Seahawks 37-23 as five-point home favorites. The Chargers allowed 191 yards through the air and a thumping 213 yards on the ground while holding the ball in possession for 26-03. Eckler led the way for Los Angeles with 127 yards from scrimmage and a couple of touchdowns, while Justin Herbert went 33 of 51 for 293 yards, a pair of touchdowns, and an interception. The Falcons are tallying 25.0 points per contest, tied 6th in the NFL, on 162.6 passing yards, 29th, and 158.1 rushing yards. They rank 6th in the league in 3rd down conversion, 44.9%, and 9th in red zone percentage, 64.0%. On the defensive side of things, Atlanta is yielding 25.6 points per game, 29th, on 306.9 passing yards, 32nd, and 108.9 rushing yards, 11th. The Falcons own the worst passing defense in the NFL, and their injury-depleted secondary will have another tough day in the office. The Chargers love to throw the ball, but they also have plenty of injury worries and will miss Mike Williams, who's recorded 37 catches for 495 yards and three touchdowns through the first seven weeks of the season. The Falcons get back RB Corridorel Patterson, knee, which will be a big boost. Atlanta's offense will look to take full advantage of the Chargers' leaky run D, so I'm expecting a tight battle at Mercedes-Benz Stadium. Hereof, give me the underdogs to cover. The Falcons have been terrific against the spread thus far and are 4-1 at TS in their previous five outings in Week 9. On the other side, the Chargers have only covered once in their last 11 games played in November. Take the Atlanta Falcons plus 3. The number 49.5 stands out as a lower total, given Law's explosive passing offense and Atlanta's sixth-ranked points per game average. There's a lot of buzz surrounding the potential return of Patterson and the Herbert Allen connection returning to form, with the wideout aiming to get back out on the field. Still, I don't see all of the hoopla resulting in a high-scoring affair, with Patterson likely sharing carries if he's healthy enough to play, and the Hebert to Allen connection far from 100%. At the end of the day, I see a run-dominant Falcons team averaging nearly 34 carries per game at home and envision them dominating time of possession. This Chargers passing attack may be facing a Falcons defense with a weak secondary, but can they take advantage without Williams and a questionable at best Allen at receiver? I'm sure Los Angeles will do its best to get Austin Eckler involved in the passing attack, but how will he fare against an Atlanta squad that's only allowing 108.9 rush yards per game? I would rather bet the under in this matchup with style of play and injury concerns factored in. Bet the total going under 49.5 points.